Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In this video, I want to talk to you about how FDIC bank insurance works. Bank failures generally happen to very few banks, though there can be spikes during and after a recession. In light of the most recent events, it is important to know not just how to generate more income for you and your family, but also how to keep your money safe. The purpose of this video is not to say that we need to withdraw cash from banks. That is not what this is about, but it is important to know how the system works so that you can make informed decisions. With that said, let's talk about how FDIC insurance works and what you can do to maximize your coverage. I will share two things that you can do today to maximize your bank insurance coverage. If you enjoy this video, remember to show your support, give it a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends and family. First things first, what is FDIC? FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. It is a federal agency that was created to ensure bank deposits in the event of a bank collapse or even worse, a major economic downturn. While that sounds promising, what does it really mean in practice? So the FDIC was established back in 1933 in response to the many bank failures during the Great Depression. FDIC insures deposits for every bank account up to $250,000 by ownership category. Ownership category is very important and I will cover it in more detail a bit later in this video. Not all banking services or banking products qualify for this coverage. FDIC insurance does not apply to stocks, bonds, annuities, U.S. Treasury bills, mutual funds, life insurance policies, and municipal securities. None of that is covered and its value will be lost if a bank cannot meet consumer demand. On the other hand, FDIC insurance does cover checking and savings accounts, high yield bank accounts such as money market accounts and certificates of deposit. In addition to that, FDIC insurance covers other official items as well, such as cashier's checks and money orders. Needless to say, you should not bank with any, any financial institution in the United States that's not FDIC insured. Just don't do it. That is a red flag. If a bank is federally insured, it will have the FDIC insurance logo on its website. If you bank with a credit union, don't worry, credit unions offer protection as well through the National Credit Union Administration. The coverage is very similar to that of the FDIC. Is there anything we can do to maximize FDIC coverage? The answer is yes, to an extent. There are actually three ways that you can do this. The first step is an obvious one. Don't keep all of your cash in one basket open accounts at different banks. So in practice, you will have a savings account that's insured up to $250,000 at, let's say, Bank A, and then you'll have a money market account that's also insured up to $250,000 at Bank B. Married couples may choose to each open individual accounts at a single bank and that will result in each one of them having up to $250,000 FDIC insured. You can then also open a joint account and each one of you will have $250,000 insured in that account. So between those three accounts that we just uh, mentioned, you could have up to $1 million that is FDIC insured at one bank. The third way that you may want to set up your banking is to be mindful of ownership categories, since this is the one criteria that is used by the FDIC to insure deposit accounts. As you can see, the FDIC does say here that all types of deposits in the same ownership, the same ownership category are combined, which is precisely why you're going to want to know how to take advantage of the 14 categories that they differentiate between. Now, let me explain. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation recognizes a total of 14 account ownership types. I know that it may be a lot of information, but it will help you see exactly what you can do to protect your money. So let's quickly go through these 14 categories. As you can see, it's a lot of information out of these 14 account types. You really need to focus on 
the ones I marked with a green check mark for you. So let's start with single accounts. Any account owned by one person only, including checking, savings, money market, and CDs. This also includes business accounts in which one person is the sole proprietor. So those of you who own LLCs, this is for you. Retirement accounts. This includes traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, simple IRAs, 401ks. The third type of an account that you may want to set up is a joint account with your spouse or a relative. Joint accounts, accounts that are opened by multiple people, including spouses. The FDIC insures $250,000 per person in joint accounts for a total of $500,000 and divides money equally among owners for this purpose. Trust accounts are next on this list, revocable and irrevocable accounts. Revocable trusts is a deposit account that identifies one or more people as beneficiaries who will get the content of this account when the owner passes away. Then there are irrevocable trust accounts. These are accounts established by a statute or written trust agreement in which the owner cedes power to change or cancel the trust. The remaining two types of accounts are employee benefit accounts and business accounts. So employee benefit accounts include deposits of a pension plan or other defined benefit plan that is not self-directed. And last but not least, business accounts, deposits owned by corporations, by partnerships, and unincorporated associations, and these could be for-profit and non-for-profits. I know we covered a lot of information in this video, but I do hope that it will help you, if needed, make some changes to your finances, or at least encourage you to do further research and see what might be best for you. If you're not sure whether your bank is FDIC insured, by the way, um, there's a way to find out. You're going to want to search for your bank on the FDIC's Bank Find tool. I will link it below. You can also look for the FDIC insurance logo on the bank site, as I mentioned earlier. Displaying this logo is a requirement for insured banks and is not allowed for those who are not insured. You can check the FDIC site to see how the official logo should appear. If you liked the video, you might also enjoy another one I've uploaded on why your side hustle or a small business must have a separate bank account. I will link the video below. Thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, show your support, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one. Take care.